just want to do a video about uh, bolt action rifles and SHTF scenarios. So first off, why would you even have a bolt action rifle in SHTF uh, scenario? Well, first off is going to be uh, accountability, and it's not accountability, uh, availability, I should say. Um, so most of y'all know that there is uh, an ammunition shortage here in the United States. Uh, we've had COVID-19 all of 2020, almost since March anyway, and uh, Joe Biden is uh, more than likely the president-elect to take over in 2021. Um, you go to a gun store and you try to look for AR-15s, AK-47s, and even if you do find them, they're going to be extremely expensive, whereas something like this is still very affordable. Um, so what would you use a bolt-action rifle for? Well, you know, obviously there's overwatch positions, you know, up on a hill, rooftops, windows, stuff like that. Um, but also, even if you're using it just for self-defense, um, even just within your home, because that's all you have. There's several things that you can do. Um, now, if, if you're using it for home defense, obviously you don't want to have you know a big old piece of glass like this on it. Uh, you just want to have like open sights um, or a, a peep sight or something like that. You may consider uh, purchasing like a short barreled uh, bolt action, as long as of course it's 16 inches. Um, and if you can't purchase one, you can always cut one down and, uh, and crown the end yourself. Um, I'm probably going to post a video about how to do that at some point, but uh, you can shorten the barrel. Um, you know, the Russians came up with what's called the Obrez during World War One, where they'd cut down their Mosin and Gantz to whatever length that they needed, and they'd uh, cut the buttstock part off and just leave the grip. And they basically had bolt-action pistols to help clear trenches and stuff with. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that with a high-dollar piece of equipment like this, but you know, if you have an in inexpensive uh, bolt action, something you know under two hundred dollars or so that uh, isn't going to make the uh, the surplus rifle crowd cringe too badly. Um, you can definitely do that. Um, so another thing with uh, availability and shortages and stuff like that, when it comes to new shooters, um, it's great to teach new shooters how to shoot on a bolt action rifle just because they're not going to waste nearly as much ammunition. Um, they're going to be forced to account for that every round, especially if you're using a piece of glass. Um, and even in SHTF scenario, if you have a, a new shooter and they're on a, you know, a, a guard watch detail, um, you know, having one of those people with, with something like this, it's going to be a lot better um, for, again, just accountability of where every single round is going. You know, if they don't, they're not, they're less likely to get scared and dump a magazine, um, you know, at a stray cat or whatever with something like this over something like a semi-automatic uh, assault rifle, like an AR-15 or an AK-47. Um, so this right here is my Remington Model 700 with, uh, I upgraded the Magpul stock. I, uh, I put um, the, uh, the short um, magwell in there so I can, you know, load. These are... Uh, uh, 20 round magazines. I believe these are 10 round, 20 round. Excuse me, 10 round magazines of 308. Um, and and I did that basically just because it's a lot easier to swap out that ammunition. You know, I have multiple ammunition types, so depending on the scenario, um, you know, if if I'm just out be bopping around I might just have FMJ in there which is you know inexpensive but still brass cased ammunition and then all of a sudden I see something that I really want to take down for example uh, you know we'll just say a wild hog or something like that because um, that's a lot of meat well it's nothing to just swap out my FMJ mag and put in soft points and as a matter of fact this is what's called an Israeli Solovit and I made a video about this and basically I have uh, FMJs um, on my main magazine here and then my side saddle magazine um, I have soft points just again so I can just drop this out slam this one in and uh, I have the soft point ammunition basically at the ready and, and for those of y'all that don't know typically soft point ammunition or uh, hollow point ammunition um, is a lot more expensive than FMJ uh, you can shoot I don't even know what they're going for now but um, there for a while I could buy a box of military FMJ that I think was from Lake City or something like that and that box of 20 rounds was like 13 or 14 dollars whereas a box of 20 rounds of soft points was closer to uh, 40 so 
Um, that's just something that I do that I recommend. Um, of course, there's other ammunition types as well. So just having different magazines filled with different ammunition um, definitely would help you out in, uh, in you know, a field situation of SHTF. Um, so a few things I want to go over with accessories. So this is my Nikon um, 4 to 12 by 40. It's about $200, and this is, that's about the lowest price point that I would recommend for a rifle like this. Um, you know, those of you that are bebopping around on eBay and Amazon trying to find a deal, you know, a $75 scope, $150 scope, you know, uh, the Bushnell banners are real common at the $150 price point. I really don't recommend those for an SHTF uh, rifle. Something that you might hunt deer with once a year and, and you know, shoot a couple rounds a year, you know, sure. I mean, that, that, that would fine. That would that'd be fine. That would fit in within your philosophy of use. But something like this, you really want to spend the very least $200. And honestly, this scope right here is probably going to get upgraded here pretty soon. Um, again, this is just uh, this is a build that I did. And, uh, you know, I was trying to just throw as many parts at it as I could, as fast as I could. So um, that's why I have the Nikon on there. It's still a pretty decent scope. I, I do like it. Um, but, uh, you know, I have, I have um, uh, lens covers on both sides. Now those of y'all that'll buy a, a scope and it comes with uh, you know lens covers with the stretchy bungee in the middle, throw that crap in the trash, okay? Because you're either gonna lose it or the the bungees are gonna wear out and you're gonna have to start twisting it in order to keep uh, um, retention on there. Throw in the trash. Just get some lens covers. They're inexpensive. You you can buy two of them for you know under thirty bucks. Uh, I'm sure you can find deals online. You can get them even cheaper. Just get lens covers. Um, you know, you buy an expensive piece of equipment like this and you treat it like absolute garbage. When, when you need it, it's going to treat you like garbage. Um, I have a bipod on here. Now, I don't necessarily use my bipod in uh, a regular manner. What I typically do is actually leave it in the up position. And that's just so I can basically protect my stock and my barrel from whatever I'm trying to rest it on. So whether it's I'm resting it on a log, on a vehicle, um, on my bag... Um, I'll actually rest it on that instead of on the uh, on the stock and on the barrel, and that basically just gives me um, a better angle when it's in my shoulder um, to uh, to fire from. Um, let's see ammunition types. So there's various different types of ammunition. Um, there's of course FMJ, which is going to be your least expensive. You can buy steel case, which is excellent for uh, target practice. Um, you can buy uh, soft points or, you know, some may call them hollow points, but I call them soft points. That's going to be some of your most expensive ammunition, um, which is what you're going to use for uh, shooting two or four-legged critters. Um, but there's also what's called AP, which is armor piercing. So the ATF says that armor piercing ammo is ammunition that is fired out of a handgun to that will defeat body armor. Okay, so... Um, Believe it or not, 308 AP is still a restricted ammunition in many U.S. states, including Texas. So, you know, before you go and try to acquire some of that, let's keep that in mind. I believe it is a misdemeanor. It's not a felony, but they will take it if they find it, and you can possibly get fined or be sent to jail. So let's keep that in mind. Now, if you go to try to buy, say, 308 AP, you're not going to be able to find it. Um, what you can do though is you can search for uh, 30 odd 6 AP projectiles because 30 odd 6 AP is legal to purchase in I believe almost all uh, 50 states except for you know maybe somewhere on the eastern or, uh, or uh, left coasts. Um, but you can take 30 odd 6 projectiles and then the same exact projectile is a three, uh, 308 so you can load. 30 out of 6 projectiles into a 308 round and you know you're good to go but again just to warn you um, it is unlawful so uh, one more thing I want to go over is uh, uh, the bolt action bag so I label almost all of my bags as you can see there and that's basically just so that if I ever send somebody to my place just to go grab you know my rifle and my bag that's specified for it um, you know, they can just come in, they see it, they grab it, and they leave. They're not, you know, spending a whole bunch of time rifling through all of my different bags trying to find the correct one. They, you know, I'll say, grab the bolt action bag. They see it's written right there on top, and they grab it, and they come back to me. And this is basically made out of just a cheap 
East German AK-47 mag pouch. Um, I did some modifications to it. Uh, I ended up spray painting it uh, desert tan with Krylon. And these for a while you could buy on cheaper than dirt for you know three or four bucks. So you know of course I bought one. Um, and I made the strap just out of uh, uh, an old duffel bag strap uh, inside it. If you open this up. Another thing too I recommend is getting a bag that you can open that's not real noisy. doesn't have Velcro or anything like that. Uh, but anyways, you open it. I have a flashlight inside just for, you know, when I'm walking up to my stand or my blind in the morning. Um, I can shine that flashlight so that way I'm not tripping over logs and stuff like that. But it's also just a little cheap and expensive one. So if I lose it, it's no huge deal. Um, also, I have uh, netting in here. And this netting is handy for multiple reasons. Um, as y'all can see, I'm a white dude. I have pretty pale skin. So I can throw this over uh, my scope in my face, in my arms. And that way I'm not a shining beacon of light to whatever I'm shooting at. Also, if the sun is in my face, um, I can throw this over the front of my scope. My scope will actually still be able to see through it and, uh, you know, reduce the glare in my eyes. Uh, I also keep a uh, paracord in here and that way I can actually hang this. So that way if it's real sunny, I can hang it above me off of a couple saplings or something like that. Uh, it'll keep the uh, sun off me. If I'm bebopping around in an urban environment and I want to uh, establish say, a sniper's hide inside a building, um, I can hang this at an angle uh, behind a window. And that way people outside can't see me, but I can still see through this um, at them. Uh, that's just kind of a, a military uh, sniper trick. It's just, you know, using a system like this. So also inside here, I have uh, extra magazines. So I have... Uh, my, I've designated these with white tips, but these are uh, subsonic rounds. I don't have a suppressor on this, but these are still excellent just for a quieter option. Um, they don't have as quite the straight trajectory that standard 308 ammunition does, but just if I want a little bit quieter option, um, so it doesn't break the sound barrier, um, I have these. I also have uh, steel cased rounds just give for uh, target practice. I'm one of those people where I'll just, you know, be driving around and then I just decide you know I want to target practice so I'll stop at my range or a buddy's house or something like that and I'll pop up a few rounds and that way I just I stay good at using a weapon system like this um, I also just have a Ziploc bag in here that still that has uh, extra FMJ rounds from uh, Lake City um, that's just so I can just reload my magazines because you know I don't really use extra magazines in this uh, just for throwing more ammo into the gun as fast as possible because this really is just kind of a, a take your time gun it really is um i have different magazines just for different ammunition types um now if you do need to just keep on throwing rounds into the gun say it's you know it's your last ditch home defense weapon uh just for financial reasons or whatever um you know don't freak out there is a way that you can sit there and, and throw lead through this thing fairly quickly now this is something that a lot of foreign militaries and even the United States military used to practice a lot uh, back when their standard firearms were bolt-action rifles and they were semi-automatic or fully automatic weapons um, this is something that's a, a, it's a different method than what most people are used to when it comes to bolt actions you know instead of you know grabbing hold of your uh, throw lever pulling it back removing your hand from the throw lever and then squeezing off around, um, you're actually going to keep your hand uh, on the throw lever and put your hand basically with the palm on the middle of the throw lever. You're going to rock it back. You're going to push it forward, bring it down, keep your hand on the throw lever, and then use your middle finger right here to actually manipulate your trigger. Okay, you can actually do this fairly quickly. Um, with a lot of practice, you can actually get to be where you're just as fast um, as a, someone manipulating the trigger on a semi-automatic weapon. So thank you all for watching. Please like my video if you enjoyed it. Uh, drop a comment in the comment section if you have any further questions. Um, and remember to subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.